Hello and welcome back to Vice City. This episode we're going to exercise Hello, our rights girl. to steal police vehicles, one which is parked right here conveniently. Thank you very much, Mr. Cop. And uh, we will attempt the vigilante missions of GTA Vice City. Uh, they work pretty much identically to how do they do in GTA 3, so like the paramedic missions, nothing much has changed. But unlike the paramedic missions, I will actually do this on camera because it can actually be a bit of fun to watch and there's also a few strategies involved, one of which is blasting them with a minigun. <laughs> so uh, there are a few things that make it easier for yourself a uh, few strategies I mean by things and that's if you hang around in this ocean beach area and if you do happen to have the minigun you'll also see I stopped off at the ammunition around the corner and picked up a MAC-10 and a fair bit of ammo for it so you can now see that gun and Mr. Cop fuck you bitch <laughs> Jesus Christ what a dickhead just running in front of my car like that um, Oh, this guy's on a Faggio, so that's pretty easy, and whoa! Uh, he's knocked him into the into the river there, of course, that means instant death. Uh, so we now have two stars, so the heat is uh, catching up with us here, of course. Uh, fuck. Oh, we're gonna end up in the river, river too soon. Oh, fuck off. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, now we're in trouble, so we got 52 seconds to find another police car. Oh, hey, it's the dude, and a fucking... Come on. Damn it. The minigun doesn't have very good range on it, as you might be able to tell. Uh, so, what can we do about this? Well, the police station is just around the corner here, so we're going to try and pick up another car before the uh, 34 seconds runs out. So, it is a lot easier for a few reasons if you hang around in this area. Uh, one of those is because there is a police station here, so if you do have the unfortunate uh, incidents of... Uh, losing your police vehicle for whatever reason you can pick up a replacement just here and just ignore that uh, broken down Hermes over there you didn't see anything <laughs> and right so now we've got that reset and we can now chase after the dude again another handy thing is that the Ocean Beach Hotel is just around the corner so you can pick up any weapons and ammo that you might need uh, during the vigilante mission itself, so if I were to run out of minigun bullets then I'd be able to pick them up again from the hotel so long as I take a decent amount of time and fuck this the cars in this game seem to be very uh, prone to lifting up on two wheels I've noticed which is uh, very annoying to say the least so generally uh, the easiest way of taking dudes down is... oh fuck uh, if you don't have the minigun or a similar weapon is by just uh, strafing them with a drive-by but the other strategy you can employ in this area is to pick up the soiree outfit there we go which will take out a two-star wanted level so uh, because police cars can't be taken to a pain spray they will say it's too hot to mess with much like uh, Tommy Vassetti himself <laughs> Especially when wearing this outfit up here. So you're going to have to find alternative ways of getting rid of the uh, police attention. And short of finding police bribes, which aren't hidden in the most convenient of locations, you can get rid of two stars with a clothing pickup, uh, which respawns rather frequently. And you can keep on picking up the same uh, clothes that you're already wearing, and it will still work, so that's fine. It's basically a free uh, two-star wipeout, and you don't get the flashing star treatment afterwards either, so it's pretty much necessary in this mission because uh, once Vigilante gets to the point where you have three or more stars, uh, actually completing the mission is going to be made pretty much, uh, well not impossible, but much harder because you can't really go anywhere without having police up your ass, and it can quickly uh, balloon out to ridiculous uh, standards to the point where you probably have a five star wanted level in which case you're probably never going to complete the mission but uh, anyway we're just trying to wait for the uh, one star I have now to disappear before I attack this guy 
because uh, I don't want to get uh, two stars. Even though there is a clothing pickup, it's best to keep the police attention to a minimum. And they just disappeared then, so now we'll go nuts uh, killing these guys. There we go, just run over them there. And drive by. Neat. So we're already up to mission 5, and we haven't really had any problems to speak of. But now that we've hit mission uh, level 5, they're going to add a second vehicle to the caper. But... Uh, the weird thing is that in Vigilante missions, we'll just make a stop off for the outfit here, and uh, the minigun is rather slow. There we go. The They could have, like, if they wanted to nerf that, they could have, like, passed uh, a minute off your time or something while you're getting changed, I guess, and that would have uh, sort of balanced it out a bit, but no. In fact, in the, in the fade to black, there is no loss of time. So you can pretty much spam that indefinitely, but anyway, what was I talking about? I forget, but let's just try and stop these guys at the, uh, at the pass here. Oh, fuck you, copper. I'm just standing with my minigun, not doing anything untoward. There we go. And another thing is that the vigilante mission won't activate until you get back inside your police car, so you can actually uh, waste a bit of time by staying as staying outside of your car as uh, long as possible before getting in and having the time bonus added, so there's that. Uh, I'm not sure how useful that strategy actually is, but it's something. And fucking hell, we can just possibly kill this dude and this dude. Yes, good work. So we now have the two stars, we've got to go make a stop off at the clothing store, and we just repeat this ad nauseum. Uh, that's gay beards or something there, <laughs> that's not what Tommy's looking for, although that probably would get rid of uh, two stars, getting a gay beard. But, um, I'm actually looking for Raphael's. There it is. Don't worry your little heads about it, policemen. I am just getting changed and you will forget you ever saw me despite changing into the exact same clothes. <laughs> Alright, let's try and cut these guys off again. So, at this point, uh, if you do not actually have the means to take out the criminals, like if you don't have a lot of Uzi ammo to do drive-flies and if you don't have a minigun or something similar to take them out, uh, it's going to be much harder for you because you're going to have to ram the cars until they set a light and then they will get out of their cars to try and uh, steal new ones. But the problem is by damaging their cars, you're also damaging your own. You can also get them to stop by doing the old PIT remover, that, uh, remover, <laughs> pit remover, yeah, uh, no, 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 it sounds like something more like, um, uh, anyway, would have been popular in the 80s, pit remover, but the PIT maneuver, which you learn in driving school in GTA San Andreas, actually comes in very handy when doing vigilante missions in that you just need to tap the back end of the car. Uh, you just tap that back end like you would a slut, and, <laughs> and uh, then the car will spin out of control and there's nothing that can be done about it, but that is usually the best way to go about it when you do not have any weapons you can use to take them out. I always loved the uh, double exclamation marks they give you when you get clean clothes. It's like, CLEAN CLOTHES! Like, <laughs> which is just uh, completely nonsensically over the top, but uh, that's okay. It's good to have some enthusiasm with the things you do in this game and uh, in life in general. And they're going to take that turn there, so that's a bit annoying. We're going to have to try and cut them off somewhere else. And it is probably necessary when using the minigun to cut off your enemies because... Uh, if you stop behind them like this, the range isn't good enough to be able to reach them, as I will demonstrate. It's 
so it's probably best to stand next to them or in front of them or something and have them drive into your uh, hail of fire because they're too stupid to actually realize that uh, miniguns are quite deadly. I'm not sure how deadly in real life and honestly I would I am a little skeptical as to whether or not you can actually carry in a minigun in real life but I am assuming it's uh, meant to be sort of, or at least in this game uh, uh, if I blow this guy up I'm gonna blow up my car and that would not be good so we better get out of here uh, I think the minigun and the M60 in this game are homages to certain 80s action movies involving Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, I believe he did wield all sorts of uh, crazy weaponry, although M60, that would be Rambo, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, First Blood or Rambo 2, I don't know, one of those uh, had a M60. I think it was First Blood, I don't know, someone correct me on that. Uh, but that's probably a homage to that. Uh, whoop. And I'm sure Arnie wielded a minigun in some movie, but I forget which one. I know he definitely did in Terminator 2, but as we all know, that was not released in the 80s. So, uh, I'm just babbling on about nothing. But I feel like this is the best sort of format to babble about nothing, because uh, it's sort of a captive audience, you see. I guess you could just turn the video off, but you're not going to do that. You're going to want to see this through. And here we go, this is the best use of our time. Although they did actually go faster than the minigun could spin there and just kill his three identical women. She was just uh, running into my fire there with a baseball bat. Probably the uh, wrong choice of weapons, I would have thought. She probably could have picked up one of her friend's shotguns or something, but the AI in this game do not have two brain cells to rub together. And, oh wow, Raphael's uh, sign lights up uh, during the night time. I'd never noticed that before, so that is that. <laughs> it's the little things that make this game. And they're just going to drive right into my bullets here. There we go, and without a single problem in the world, we're now up to mission level 12, which is the final mission, and they're just here. Well, it doesn't have to be the final one, because unlike... Uh, GTA 3. In fact, oh, fuck off, Cobber. Oh, don't go ruining this for me now, and how did I not fucking shoot him? Oh, god damn it. This is going to be real... Fuck you. I'm going to actually screw this up in the last level, but... I lied earlier when I said this is similar to GTA 3. It is actually different in GTA 3. In order to complete the vigilante missions, you had to complete... Oh, uh, you had to kill 20 criminals on each island. Uh, reaching mission level 12 was in fact unnecessary, but in this game you just have to do mission 12. Uh, you, whoa, he's just going up the ramp there. Unique stunts only work for me, buddy, not you. And this is the last guy, so if we can possibly kill him, uh, we will be finished with this god-forsaken shit. Oh, fuck off. We're really stretching this out for longer than it needs to be. I don't want to get out of the car because the fucking cops will run me over. And that guy's got a shotgun. Shotguns are bloody great cars. Or at least they did in GTA 3. They're not quite so overpowered in this game. They sort of got nerfed. Uh, the regular pump shotguns got nerfed. And what the fuck is that? Is there anyone even in that car? Jesus Christ. Something weird's happening in Mission 12 here. There we go! And there is our reward. And it doesn't get rid of the fucking police company. God damn it. So we now have a max armor level of 150. And I can't actually deactivate the vigilante mission until I get into the police car. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, oh, piss off.
just pick up these grenades. I'm not sure why I'm even picking them up anymore. I barely use them, but I just feel like they're useful. There we go, we cancel the mission. And we now drive to the hotel and we are done. That is now 150 health and 150 armor. So we are, and a buttload of fucking weapons spawning in our hideouts. So I feel like we're uh, making good progress in this game, despite in my stats. It says I've only completed 25% in 10 hours of game time, so uh, some things in this game must be weighted with a lot of percentage, because I have completed quite a lot, I think, but um, anyway, more than a quarter, I thought, anyway. And these cops are still a problem, so we'll just change into our uh, wonderful street gear with these awesome faded jeans. And uh, we now have a lot of money, $159,000. That's more than we know what to do with. So I'll see you next time for uh, more Let's Play GTA Vice City.